Welcome to Z Classroom. In this video, we'll be examining polypainting and the possibilities of using color information to help push your sculptures further. Polypainting refers to the process of adding color to your 3D model. You can create some very complex color schemes and derive a tremendous deal of realism from your sculpts by incorporating color. Whether you're detailing a vehicle, environment, or a character or creature, chances are at some point you're going to want to paint your model. Let's begin with this sphere. You're probably wondering right off the bat why my model is gray and not the standard red wax color. This is the result of selecting a different material from the material palette. Each material has its own lighting and color information. We'll cover materials in another video tutorial here inside Z Classroom. For now, it's important that we stick to the basics of adding color to your model using a standard shade of gray as a base for ease of display. Let's take a closer look at how this coloring process works. If you're new to 3D, we'll take a moment to cover a bit of the technical details. This will give you a clearer understanding of how and why things look the way they do on your screen. Color information is applied to something called vertices. Vertices and polygons make up the visual representation of what you're seeing on your screen. The more vertices and polygons used to make up your model, the more detailed the applied color will be. This holds true for sculpting as well. The magic of ZBrush is in its capacity to handle millions and millions of polygons, thereby giving you the freedom to achieve higher levels of realism. If we take a look at a brief example, you'll notice when we zoom in with polyframe mode on, that this sphere is composed of many vertices and polygons. The red dots represent vertices or verts. The vertices are what hold together the faces you see, or polygons. Each of these will have three or four points most commonly making up a face. We refer to these as tries and quads. When the time is right for you to apply color to your model, you'll want to be sure you have enough physical density to handle the level of detail you're trying to achieve. To begin polypainting, you'll want to hover over the polypaint palette to the right of the ZBrush canvas. Once you open this tab, you'll be given a couple of options. For the purposes of this introductory video, we'll stick to the basics. Click on Colorize. Take note of how the material represented on your screen may have changed. This is an indicator that you're ready to start applying color. You've probably noticed the color box to the left of the canvas. We only want to apply color or paint to our model and not affect sculptural change. To do this, click the Z Add button. This will turn off the ability to add clay to the model. Make sure RGB is selected. Now you can choose a color from the color palette to the left of the ZBrush canvas located here. This is your color palette and it's where you'll select the active color you want to start painting with. You can use a shortcut key to select color information from almost anywhere within the ZBrush interface. Let's try. Hold the C key and hover around. Pay particular attention to the color box on the left as it continually updates your color selection. Once you're satisfied with the color, let go of the C key. You'll notice the color is whatever color you selected before letting go of the C key. Alternately, you could simply use the color picker inside the color box to select your color. The hotkey lets you actively select color that may already be on your model. In this example, you can see that when the poly count is lower, the paint is somewhat blurry. By taking the model to higher levels of res resolution and increasing the number of verts and polygons, we're giving the paint more points to fill, and as such, the color will look more uniform across the surface. To increase the model's density, you'll select Divide inside the Geometry tab to the right of the canvas, or simply click Control D. Notice here, when the poly count is low, we experience a color fade. Again, this is the result of having a smaller number of verts or polygons. Here, you can see how much more detailed the application of color becomes as resolution is increased. Again. You can increase the number of polygons by either clicking Control D or clicking Divide in the Geometry Palette. This is an important aspect to achieving high-level paint detail on your sculptures. The more verts and polygons you have available, 
the more possibilities you have for displaying more complex gradients of color. We won't go into it here, but this same principle will apply when sculpting. The more dense the model, the more detail available. While you're painting, you may start to think about UVs. You don't need to worry about UVs when poly painting in ZBrush. You can create UVs later when you're ready to generate texture maps. You'll also probably be interested in using different strokes when applying paint to your models. This is the fun part because you can generate a great deal of random color distribution creating a more realistic blend between colors. To change the stroke type associated with your brush, you'll want to hover over the stroke palette here to the left of the canvas. We'll cover strokes and alphas in another video later in this introductory series of videos. For now, go ahead and select Spray. You can immediately see the difference in how the paint is applied to the model when switching between the various stroke types. We started out with a stroke that displayed uniformly across the surface of the model, and now we see the effect of the paint being sprayed. You can even use the drag rect, which is short for drag rectangle, to derive interesting color distribution with an alpha. Again, don't get too worried about the strokes and alphas, because they've got their own videos here inside Z Classroom. To manage the intensity of your painted stroke across the model, use the RGB slider. The RGB slider will allow you to affect the opacity of the paint being applied to the model. You can access it either by clicking on the slider at the top of the ZBrush interface, or simply hold the spacebar as a shortcut to bring up some commonly used functions. This might be a good time to draw attention to the fact that the spacebar acts as a shortcut to a compact menu. This menu is filled with some of the more commonly used functions inside ZBrush. You can simply click the spacebar and use the sliders and buttons to actively make changes as you're working. If you click off the Colorize tab, you'll notice your model retains the last active color selected as its overall color. You can remedy this and achieve any color inside the color selection box or simply click on the Colorize button to bring back your poly paint information. In most cases, you can adjust the color of your material by simply moving the selection box around inside the color box. Again, you'll have to select Colorize to actively add color to your model. Let's take a look at opening up the option to paint and sculpt at the same time. If you want to add or subtract clay and color at the same time, you'll want to click on the Z Add or Z Sub buttons located above the canvas. Notice that now, your stroke is applying clay and color at the same time. Remember, the RGB setting will determine how much of the color selected is applied to your model. Another important factor to consider is the Z intensity associated with the Z add or Z sub buttons. This will determine how much clay is added or subtracted from your model. Here, you can see when the RGB slider is lowered, the amount of color is reduced. You can even do this with the Z intensity slider. You can achieve a high degree of control over the amount of clay added or subtracted and controlling it with the sliders. This is just the beginning of what you can achieve using poly painting. In later videos, we'll cover converting poly paint information into texture maps to be applied to UVs. For now, we hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction. Thanks for watching Z Classroom. See you next time. Thank you.